probably not as big of an upset as Carlos Alcaraz losing to Botic von der Zonschulp a little bit more than 24 hours ago. However, still quite a big one in my opinion because Novak, as I mentioned in my previous videos, simply just doesn't lose to players who are not Grand Slam champions. Not saying that Popperin might not win this, this is absolutely crazy, but he just does not lose to non-Grand Slam champions on Grand Slams when he's remotely healthy, even when he's hurt, uh, let alone healthy or motivated. However, it finally happened. This is easily by far the worst Novak Djokovic loss in the past six years, dating back to the horrible days of 2017, early 2018, when he was losing to pretty much everybody, Cecchinato, Chung, Istamin. Prior to that same query, which kind of jump started the horrible 24-month uh, uh, streak. And yeah, it happened. Alexei Popperin played a great match. And Novak was just serving abysmal the whole tournament. I mean, he was serving 47% for two and a half matches. Uh, he kind of raised his serving level when it comes to percentage later on in this match, but he was still double faulting left and right. So a horrible serving performance for Novak. Um, and it's kind of interesting, at 5-2 in the fourth, I realized that this is exactly the same score line as Daniil Medvedev versus Novak Djokovic 2021 US Open final, if you ignore the third set. Exactly the same score, exactly the same flow. 6-4, 6-4, then ignore the third set, the 2-6 set, and then 5-2 with a double break. And I realized this at 5-2, and I thought that, man, Novak is going to break back here. It's going to be 5-4, and then Popperin is probably going to serve it out. And guess what happened? Popperin was probably way too tight in that eighth game. Uh, he went down 40 nothing. He actually saved three break points, but then lost the following two points. Novak got back up to 5-4, and then Popperin just hit a couple of great serves, finished it off, same in the same fashion as pretty much Botik van der Zanschub did versus Carlos Alcaraz. Um, so yeah, exactly the same match as Daniil Medvedev versus Novak Djokovic when you ignored the third set three years ago. Um, when it comes to the actual match, uh, this is this is kind of I've noticed this a couple of times. Another thing that popped up in my mind was Sinner Djokovic 2024 Australian Open. Um, Novak was playing like crap in the first two sets in both matches. Sinner was destroying him 6-1-6-2. T uh, Popperin beat him 6-4-6-4 -4 in the first two, of course Sinner being the better player. However, um, in the third set you can kind of feel that everybody is expecting Novak to raise his level. He did it so many times that it's almost inevitable that he's going to raise his level. And in both of those matches, Novak did kind of raise his level, but it wasn't that good. It was mostly the other player playing shit or being actually scared or maybe thinking, well, actually, when is Novak going to raise his level? Am I going to be absolutely destroyed in the third, fourth, and fifth? It's happened so many times. So in the third set, Popperin was kind of all over the place. Uh, Novak broke him actually three times. He got broken back once and uh, won the set comfortably 6-2. It was also the same scoreline. If I'm doing scorelines, it was exactly the same scoreline as Jerry Djokovic. Uh, 12 months ago, exactly the same round, it was 6-4, 6-4, and I was kind of expecting at that moment uh, uh, to be to finish in the same fashion, something like 6-1, 6-2, 6-3 sets, but uh, what I failed to realize that Novak was still not Novak, he was playing really fast between the points, he wasn't grunting, he wasn't yelling at his box, he wasn't angry, he wasn't giving those eyes, he wasn't arguing with the crowd, with the umpire, or something like that. He kind of started doing that in the fourth set, he did a couple of fist bumps and that, but it, it was still absolutely nothing. Compare that to the Olympics. Compare him yelling after every single point, no matter if he won or lost, uh, at his box, yelling at Viktor Trotsky, uh, <laughs> and this this is was this was completely different. This was, I mean, Novak, it seemed like he wasn't there at all. I mean, as I mentioned, he was serving 47% for two and a half matches pretty much on this tournament. Um, so what happened in the third? It was pretty much the same as the Sinner match. Sinner kind of dipped. Popperin kind of dipped. Novak kind of raised his level, but not by much. And uh, it was kind of also interesting that Novak was still playing fast between the points and he actually didn't go off the court like he did it, for example, against Jerry when he was down two to nothing, which was, I guess, another sign that this is not the real Novak because he would probably go into the bathroom, kind of yell at himself in the mirror and then come out motivated. But he was just still kind of like, eh, vanilla, I don't know. And in the fourth set, so the fourth set was actually quite good. Novak was still sort of raising his level. And the key moment, in my opinion, in this match 
was Popperin's hold in the second game of the set because it was one nothing to Novak. Popperin was in the how do I say that whirlpool? Yes, is that a whirlpool? The thing in the water of you know so many guys that fell into that you know sort of like I'm up to and over versus Novak. I lost the third set. I'm going to lose the match. And he did save two key breakpoints in that game. And he let out a huge sign of relief. Uh, he was grunting. He was yelling. He was talking to his box. And you can see that Popperin actually believed in himself. And he thought that he had a chance. And then he thought that he might do it. So that was the key. And then, of course, that really long fifth game, Novak had a couple of double faults. Um, and Popperin played exceptional tennis. I mean, the passing shots were absolutely ridiculous. He played like Alcaraz at Wimbledon. That was ridiculous. Novak couldn't get past him. He was reaching every single drop shot. Novak couldn't figure it out. Uh, approach shots weren't good enough. Uh, passing shots were always caught in, uh, catching Novak off guard. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then, of course, at 4-2, another key game when Novak was serving to keep it close at 4-3. He had a couple of game points, but I think he double-folded double folded, uh, three or four times in the game. Absolutely horrific. Um, so so that was pretty much it. And as I mentioned, at the 5-2, it was pretty much the same as Daniel Medvedev Novak um, three years ago. So it is what it is. I think if you would ask Novak prior to this tournament... Uh, or not prior to this tournament, prior to the Olympics, would you take uh, a third round exit at the 2024 US Open in exchange of a Olympic gold medal? I think he would say yes, because, I mean, I think that was his biggest goal this year. I know he wanted to win some slams, but, you know, that was the one tournament that he never won. He was so happy, so relieved. And you can see him walking around with his gold medal. I think he mentally still was in Paris. He was still on his vacation celebrating the gold medal. And he kind of, you know, came in New York hoping to race his form, similar to the 2024 Australian Open, uh, hopefully getting better as the rounds progress and as the opponents get, you know, tougher and then the motivation level goes up. But it did not happen. Alexei Popperin beat him. And because of that, and because of Carlos Alcaraz's loss, we have completely open. I mean, yes, of course, Sinner is probably the number one favorite, and Daniil Medvedev is now the number two favorite, something along with Zverev. And of course, Sinner and Medvedev are pretty much due to meet, unless more upsets happen, uh, in the quarterfinals. So that's going to be pretty much a quarterfinal before a final. Um, but if you look at the bottom side of the draw, we have TFL Popperin, and then we have Rublev Dimitrov, then we have Nakashima and Zverev, and then we have Rudin Fritz. This is wide open. Like, I'll be really surprised if Brendan Nakashima reaches the final, but my god, I mean, anything can happen. Popperin just won Toronto, he's playing out of his mind, he's playing the best tennis of his life. TFO, I mean, with the crowd, it was actually interesting. I watched like eight hours of tennis yesterday, maybe even nine hours, and I watched Shelton and TFO. And I always thought that Tiafo was this wild guy riding the momentum. He was like by far the more stable, steady baseline player, always putting the shots in while Shelton was all over the place. He was either hitting 140 mile per hour aces or he was double faulting or he was missing big forehands. I mean, he was all over the place. And Tiafo was a solid player. So uh, Popper and Tiafo will be an interesting match. I mean, if Tiafoe makes the final, probably isn't the biggest surprise. And then, of course, you have Rublev and Dimitrov. I mean, a great chance for any of them. Dimitrov, can he finally do it? Can he finally reach a Grand Slam final? Maybe even win it? I mean, he is... How many semifinals does he have? Two, I think. I'm not really sure. And then, of course, Rublev never made a Grand Slam semifinal. My God, he has to beat Grigor Dimitrov and then the winner of Francis Tiafo, Alexei Popperin. Can he finally do it? I mean, he was drawn together with Novak once more. And now Novak is out. Like, Andre Rublev, my God, you're like 0-11, 0-12 in Grand Slam quarterfinals. You have to do it at some point. Like, you have to. Um, Nakashima and Zverev, I would expect Zverev to win. Although he dropped two sets already in this tournament, but I think Zverev wins. And then Rudin Fritz, who knows? I think it's a coin flip pretty much. And then the winner goes and faces Zverev in the quarters. I mean, Fritz already beats Zverev this year. Rude can beat him. I don't know what's going to happen here. I mean, I can see basically anybody besides... I mean, even Nakashima is playing well, but I don't think that he's going to reach the final. I mean, seven out of eight guys can reach the final out of this half of the draw. And then, of course, the other side, we have 16 players remaining. 
And of course, Cedar is going to be favorite versus O'Connell. Uh, Tommy Paul is going to be a favorite against uh, Diallo. Borges, Menchik, um, you know, maybe a 50 50 match. It should be Sinner and Medvedev. Uh, and then, of course, you have Van der Zonschlub, Draper, Goffan, Mahach, Deminor. I mean, this is a great chance for Deminor to make the semifinals. Dan Evans, I don't think that Dan Evans can do it. I don't think he has the cardio to do it. But then maybe even Jordan Thompson. Like, I think one of the most overrated. Not overrated, Jesus. Underrated guys on the tour is Jordan Thompson. He's perfectly capable of playing good tennis. Maybe he can reach the semifinal. I don't know. Maybe Arnaldo can break through. So, I mean, this is wide, 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 wide open. And, you know, I'm always a guy who is going to say that best of five is a superior format because it gives more chances to favorites, which is the truth. And because you have more chances for the favorites, the favorites win more often. You have more established players. And that means that you always get the high quality matches later in the tournament but once in a blue moon maybe it's not that bad to have something like Popperin versus Dimitrov or Rublev quarterfinal and then I don't know Taylor Fritz and TFO semifinal something like that maybe Deminor maybe Jordan Thompson in the semifinal I don't know um, so th this is wide open uh, also a great opportunity uh, for Daniil Medvedev to finally win slam number two, if he can beat Sinner in the quarterfinals. Daniil came into this tournament completely out of form. He was, I think he lost, did he win a single match in uh, Toronto and Cincinnati? I'm not really sure. Maybe he won one match. I'm not really sure. This is a great opportunity for him. I mean, he just pretty much needs to beat Sinner. He'll be the favorite in the semifinal. And then the worst thing that can happen is Zverev in the final. And he already beats Zverev on hard this year. So, I mean, great opportunity for Daniil Medvedev. Great opportunity for Zverev. Great opportunity for Sinner to sort of like establish himself as a true number one to come out of out of all this doping controversy with a great grand slam title uh after not playing that well for a couple of months struggling with some injuries uh, this is ridiculous this is wide open so uh, as i mentioned i'm not completely against it of course i would like i would have loved novak to win this tournament to win number 25 it would have been his tournament number 100 this would have been the first time he would have uh, defended his U.S. Open title. Still nobody defended his title since 2008 Federer. But it didn't happen. So, I mean, might as well enjoy the remainder of the tournament. So what did you think about Novak losing to uh, Alexei Popperin? What are your predictions for Novak 2025? Will he win number 25 in 25? Will that finally happen? I don't know. We'll see.